greatest show of all time. We have a man that in his own modest way can tell you, I don't like it. Just tell me you the truth. You like it? No! Listen to my fucking ranting. Listen to what you do to me. I don't believe you anymore. Unjustifiably in a position that I'd rather not be in. Hosted by this guy that ran with every woman that would have him from the time he was 15. You like it? Yeah. You want one? And 90,000 people watch you. In my moment of glory. Yeah, no, I'm living a nightmare. I don't trust you. Justin Draven. Wow, Mr. Sarcasm. I don't think AEW's biggest problem has been the ratings. I don't think AEW's biggest problem has been the ratings war. I don't think AEW's biggest problem has been NXT or WWE at all. I think AEW's biggest problems so far, up to this point, have been booking weekly television and executive vice president Cody Rhodes. I know that's a hot take, but think about it. AEW was great when it was just a pop-up event, like all out and all in, and double or nothing. They were great, memorable, viral. Once they went to weekly television, it was good. I would say until Chris Jericho lost the title. And then it's just been random booking, odd stories, pop-up feuds that just disappear, lackluster matches, botched explosions. I mean, it's just not been good. But I don't think it's the problem of the ratings. I think it's the problem of the booking and I think Cody Rhodes going out and doing all this extra stuff is probably not good for the wrestling brand it's good for the Cody brand and honestly I don't think I've seen him on being the elite in a very long time so I don't know what's going on there there might be trouble in paradise who knows I don't know but it all coincides with how I've started falling out with wrestling again. And that's why I haven't been doing super wrestling uh, intense videos. I've been sprinkling some stuff in there. And I would also like to thank you guys for helping me talk myself out of an anxiety attack. My last episode. I just had to, I don't know, I woke up and I just had to say something. Because I was freaking out for nothing. <laughs> and I don't know why. And I listened to it back. Listened to it back. Listened back to it today as I was running some errands and I didn't actually discuss it in the video because I just wanted to get it out there and show everybody maybe you know people can relate that you know who have anxiety but I wanted to expand upon it a little bit that out of those stories I was telling you I think maybe I got the uh, realization that everything was all right after I took the risk. And taking a risk is okay sometimes. I think that's what I was getting at with the video, but I didn't, I just wanted to get it out to you guys after I recorded it because I don't know, I like to ramble. But again, I appreciate it. And it meant a lot that you guys stuck with me and let me uh, talk my stuff. But that might correlate to some good news and bad news I have, depending on how you feel on the stance of my content. Uh, I gotta do some stuff in the real world for a few weeks, so I don't know how much I will be popping on, because I don't know how long my days are gonna get in the next few weeks. And then when I get more time off, I'll obviously try to saturate the market again the way I've been doing and that's why I've been also getting into like random stuff because I wanted to be out there for when I come back I want everyone to know 
I'm doing this before everyone else. I want everyone to appreciate the uniqueness of this. And I'm going to start doing some skits as well. I might even do one a little bit later with my wife called My Wife Hates Wrestling. Me and her are going to watch a match. I haven't decided if I want to watch Vince McMahon versus Bret Hart or show her the latter match between Sean and Razor. Not sure yet, but we'll figure it out. She's still pretty reluctant to do it, but I'll get her. So that's coming. So you guys can look forward to that. I'm probably going to add that into some of the episodes. But that's for now. The news of this of the top of the video. I won't be doing anything is consistent for the next few weeks because I got to go back to being an adult. Just until I finish this job, and then when I'm done this job, I can hang out with you for a little bit more, and then I'll have to go back and do another job, and then I'll come back and hang out with you some more. That's just how it goes. But I wanted to start doing this, like I said, because a fear of missing out, I guess. I wanted to start doing this before I started getting involved in other things and distracting my mind from doing this. Because I've been wanting to do this for a while, so now, now I'm doing it. I've been getting some friends, you guys. Appreciate it. Still waiting to hear from you in the comments. Talk about some of this stuff. You can tell me if my stuff's no good or if it's boring or what else you'd like to hear, whatever. Maybe I'll take in some of it into consideration. Maybe I'll tell you to go fuck yourself. We don't know. Like I said, I don't have a strict format of doing anything on this show. And with running the risk of beating a dead horse again, instead of telling you, I'd rather show you. I could show you better than I could tell you. How about that? Or I guess I could tell you better than I could show you in this instance. Because I do have a topic of wrestling to talk today. And I started the video with it. It's, I think Cody has been doing too much. And I honestly, I heard a clip from Jim Cornette. And I know I told you I didn't want to be doing the same stuff as everybody. But I'm doing my take on it. A different take. I do think Cody has alienated the Young Bucks. Because I haven't seen him on Being the Elite. I haven't seen him on anything that they're doing. He's off in his own little bubble. He's doing his own reality show. He's doing the Go Big show. The Young Bucks are stuck on being the elite. I don't think the Young Bucks were trying to go Hollywood and corporate. I think Cody might have been a snake's, snake oil salesman in this, in this situation. And I think he might have gaslighted the Young Bucks. And I think... I mean, what he did, it was great. They, they formed a company... And also, who actually owns that? Because they were the elite way before all elite. So now if shit does hit the fan, are they going to be the elite still? Do they still get to keep the elite? Because you know they're not going to be able to keep the company. That was another mistake they did. Putting all that in with the, giving Tony Khan the final say and the final word. Maybe even the final ownership on the intellect, uh, intellectual property of AEW. I think that would be a mistake. And I think what they've been doing right now is a mistake. They've all that's why I said in one of my first videos their biggest mistake at that point that I saw was that they were all publicly known as executive vice presidents. You can't win in that situation. You keep winning. Like look at how Cody kept winning. People are starting to get sick of it. He keeps winning. That's why that's why he had to lose the QT Marshall match. He had to. There was no other situation that was going to come out where Cody won and people were going to be like, yup, okay, he's still our guy. You're building him like a fucking Terminator. The guy just destroys everybody. Unfortunately, now, rest in peace, Brody, Lee, John Huber. Unfortunately, now, listening to interviews, it just sounds like Cody gave him the TNT title because he knew he was sick. And he wanted to help, which is commendable and really nice. And it's an honorable thing to do. He wanted to show John Huber that he was a a draw and a top guy type talent. Which he did. I've always liked John Huber's work since I've 
learned about him when he came to WWE. But hearing those interviews, Cody just sounds not belittling. Not, it's kind of condescending, holier-than-thou type attitude when you hear him in those interviews saying that they knew that he was sick and all this, and that's why I think that's why Brody won the TNT title, but that's still another story. That was the only person who beat Cody in a convincing fashion or a shocking fashion. They should have never been known to be executive vice presidents because then even with the world title thing why do you think he put that clause into his match with Jericho before that he could never or MJF that he could never challenge for the title again because he saw that at least he saw that coming down the line he knew that if you're known as the guy they're they're, they're gonna know you're just putting the title on yourself to play big shot and the Bucks, I give them credit that they at least tried putting over tag teams before they took the titles. Hangman Page is probably the only guy I really feel bad for out of that situation because you knew he wasn't going to get a title shot ever again. When's the next time they're going to roll it back around to Hangman Page for the world title? Not for a while, I don't think. That's why they shouldn't have taken it off of Jericho. For at least two years, have him beat every top guy, retain the title. Then, I'm not saying who should have stripped him, but then whoever you want, take the title off of him. Because one, that builds the prestigeness of the title. You know what I mean? It's not just going to keep... They already have already got three champions. Shouldn't have happened. Jericho should have just been losing that title. Maybe even in another year when his contract's up. Or if it's up now, I'm not I haven't really paid attention to any of that stuff in so long. But whenever his contract's up, that's when he should have lost the title. He should have been the the champion the entire time his contract was signed. Because then it would have given you a reason to find someone to be the next champion. Not just booking yourself into a corner with this random booking and throwing stuff at a wall. See if that sticks. Because I like John Moxley a lot. <clears throat> Excuse me. I fanned out, fanboyed out when he showed up at AEW. And threw Kenny Omega off of the poker chips. I was a big fan. And then I'll have, I even have, I have a problem with him as well. John Moxley was complaining that WWE was hokey and crap and shit writing. Literally, what, a month into his AEW run, he's wearing a fucking eye patch? But I can respect the fact that he gave up a toxic working environment and all that money for creative freedom and personal happiness. I I can 100% relate to that because I've broken off from a corporation to do my own thing so I know what that's like so for him to say AEW isn't doing as equal if not more ridiculous crazy shit is just absurd and we can see through that but I respect the fact that you left a toxic working environment to start a new somewhere else I can respect that but your title run was lackluster. Your run here so far has been lackluster. Your promos are good, but they're even getting old. And you would think your buddy Cody would help you some of his pull that he has in the back to get you into some better storylines. But no, he's off shooting his own reality show and the Go Big show. I like what Jake Roberts said when he debuted Caesar, because he obviously views himself as Caesar, and that's not good for the brand at all. I think you guys might have also messed up when you went to weekly television. I understand you had a point to prove and you wanted to take down the giant, but you might have bitten off more than you can chew because weekly television is not your strong suit. You have your moments, but when you were booking for maybe a monthly event, bi-monthly event, 
your shit was on point. I think what you should have did before you went to weekly television would have had at least a year's worth of storylines for each one of the guys that you had. So you had them at least taken care of for when you start bringing in new guys to start bringing up new stuff. Jumping around randomly like one of my podcasts. I feel as if they've lied to us consistently. More and more so now. It's the same guys on Dynamite every week. Not any new faces. They put their new faces on Elevation and Dark. Which is fine. I can appreciate that as well. But the guys you have, you don't even do anything with. You'll put a no-name guy. You'll, you'll try to do like a squash match with a guy with face, with face name value against a guy that knows no one knows. And you'll have a competitive match. How does that make sense? Can you imagine Razor Ramon coming out and having a competitive match with Barry Horowitz? No, he's going to squash the shit out of him. How did they make that exciting? While well, they snuck in the one, two, three kid. That was the exception to the rule. I mean, you guys don't think about that. You try to copy angles from years ago, and then you botch them. You don't even do them as good when they were done in the smoky, filled southern arenas. It's a problem problem you should probably fix maybe get on the same page with your other executive vice presidents what you need to do swallow your pride get off your high horse and if you can use your bow and arrow to shoot a message up to that ivory tower of Jim Cornette and actually listen to what the man has to say maybe you guys would have a shot instead of just thinking you fucking know it all because, yeah, he'd probably agree with you. Okay, yeah, we can copy this storyline from 20 years ago, but this is what we're going to do. We're not going to do any of your outlaw mud bullshit. Because it's good here and there. Yeah, makes stuff different, but every match is ridiculous. This is better quality ECW. Just a fucking jumbled mess. And I'm not even saying that to take a shot at ECW, because ECW was great, too. In the highlight videos. That's how I consume AEW at the moment. I can't watch a full show. I'll watch the highlights that they choose to obviously pick the best spots to put on YouTube. And I've already called them out on that. They need to get somebody on top of their social media account. Get them back out there because I was doing a real-time search on stuff. And let me tell you, WWE had seven videos to their one. It's probably good you're moving nights. WWE's going to start stealing all your hashtags. All your trending spots. That's how I think they're kind of... That's how they're combating you. They're saying, okay. The hype is obviously there for this Wednesday Night War thing. Eliminate the war. Let's see how they stand on their own. And yeah, you'll have your diehards. But you'll also have the people like me. That you lost. Who want to keep watching. Who's giving you the benefit of the doubt. But we don't believe you anymore. And I'm sure the people. You guys. Who are listening to me ramble and rant about this shit. Feel the same. Or else you wouldn't be listening to me ramble and rant. You want to be. Involved. And invested. But they just keep cheating you. It's exactly what it is. ECW was the same way. Looked great on the highlight reel, but you couldn't get through a full show because it was a cluttered fucking mess. Business was being done terribly. Nothing was consistent. Like one of my podcasts. See? Self-deprecation, people. There's a lot of you out there that like it. There's a lot of you out there that like me just rambling. Let me tell you, not to brag, but I got a lot of blue checks following me. I just went and did some Twitter cleaning today. To clean out people who aren't following me that I'm following and vice versa to even it up a little bit mess with not mess with the numbers but you know fix the numbers get them nice and order 
I got a lot of blue checks following me from different fields. So that's pretty awesome. Maybe I can get some of them on for an interview. See if they like wrestling. See if they get anxiety. Hmm. It's all coming together now. It's just a spot to come, talk, chill, share stories, experiences. Like today, I told you I wasn't always going to have something to do about wrestling, but today I figured I could touch on a few points about where I think AEW has failed and where their biggest problem is. And I think I'm right. I think the elite has divided behind the scenes. I think they're succumbing to the pressure of weekly television. I think they're lacking on uh, long-term storytelling for not even just their main characters, for all their characters. That's another thing people want to hate on Vince Russo for in the Attitude Era. Everyone in the Attitude Era had something to do. Everyone. From the jobbers to the main event. Mid-carters, they were all over. Maybe you guys should start taking advice from the elders. And I know Cornette will not be involved unless Russo is, I mean, if Russo is, and vice versa. So maybe talk to each one of them separately and filter out what you guys can take away from that. Because other than that, you guys are, I don't know, you got to pull off a miracle to pull me back in. I was a fan of Brian Cage until you made him lose to Darby Allen twice. I can't suspend my disbelief for that long. Not twice. Once, okay. Twice, no. Maybe have Cage be the aggressor dominating Darby for a while. And then Darby pull off a surprise win. That's how you do that. You don't have Darby Allen being the aggressor and beating the shit out of what looks to be a 280-pound man. Uh, that's just some of my thoughts today. What do you guys think? You let me know in the comments section below. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Let's get the word out there. See? Your little marks. You're lucky. Still revolve everything around wrestling for you. Even though that's not what I really want to do. I still bring it back to wrestling for you.